Okay, today I'm going to show you how to attach the new Rex Sticks rod butt onto your rod. So now you've got a locking rod adapter, built in rod holder on your rod so you'll never lose a rod off a kayak, your chair, or anywhere else. And you can mount these uh, arms pretty much anywhere you want. So, first, things you're going to need you need some regular masking tape, little cup popsicle stick, two-part epoxy. I'm using Harbor Freight quick setting epoxy. Um, for cleanup, it's nice to have paper towels. You can use alcohol, nail polish remover. I'm actually going to use some hand sanitizer to uh, for cleanup. I'm just going to moisten paper towel, get that ready for cleanup. Okay, now we want to figure out where to put the locking rod butt. Now, if you're fishing from a kayak, it's nice to shorten the handle. Most of your dedicated kayak rods now have a little shorter handle, so you're not hitting the handle on your life jacket as you're casting. So, it's nice to have a little shorter handle, and, you know, cutting up, you know, you can decide where you want to cut that rod off to shorten it up. Now, for those of you that are fishing with one arm, and want to have an adaptive rod, you want to space it, so that for a casting rod, it's going to be about the same as for a kayak rod. You want it so that you can push down with your thumb and use the heel of your hand to release it from your chest. If this was a spinning rod, you know, I need to be able to flip the bale over, hold the line, and then reach back and push that down with the heel of my hand. So I can't have it way down here because I can't, I can't hold the line, drag it back here. It would be awkward. Um, so you got to attach it much closer and you've got to have a down locking reel seat a reel seat that screws down from the top for a spinning rod for a bait casting rod It's not gonna matter as much because you can you can move it a lot farther back So I'm gonna decide where I want it And then I'm just gonna mark that spot With this piece of tape Okay Now let's go to our miter saw and cut that off Okay, see now I've cut off my rod. That miter saw did a great job just making a nice clean cut. And I can see where I want that. It's going to sit now. So it's going to sit right there, which is perfect. I can, I'm, you know, using one hand, I can still push the, the release down. I can use my thumb on the bait casting reel. It's going to work perfect. So I want to figure out kind of how far this is going to sit in the butt section. I've got the cap on. I'm just going to slide it on there until it hits the end. I'm just going to mark it. Let's see, so it's right about there. That's just about the right spot of where, how deep the rod is going to go into the butt section. See that? I just marked that with a piece of tape. I don't know how far that's going to go. So now as you see, I'm just, I'm just winding this masking tape on. It doesn't have to look great. It doesn't have to look perfect. And if you're wondering about masking tape, this is what rod builders around the world use to build up the diameter of, you know, the real seats, whatever they need to increase the di diameter. They just use uh, masking tape for the most part. Okay. Still got a ways to go. I want a little bit of gap for the epoxy, so that's about right. I'm going to cut that off. Okay, so it lays down nice and flat. Okay, it's maybe a little too tight. If it's too tight, I'm just going to go ahead and peel some off and cut it off. I think it's good to be able to peel and cut. Keep checking the diameter. That's, That's going to be just about perfect. Okay. Here, 
Scissors would be great too, of course. Probably should have used scissors. Okay. If there's little wrinkles, it's fine. Use a nice tight wrap around there. There, there we go. Okay. So now, if I want a little tighter, I could even I could even put on another some more tape even after I've cut it. Okay, let's eyeball it. About equal amounts of resin and hardener. Cap back on. Can wipe up any excess there. Okay. Now this is gonna be pretty thick. I've got five minutes now. Once I start mixing this, this is a five minute epoxy. There you go. Now, let me go ahead and coat, some, coat my rod. Start at the back. Now this gap here doesn't matter. I don't need to fill in that gap. So what I'm gonna do is mainly get it around all over my masking tape and then as it pushes over it's gonna push it's gonna push epoxy into that space. I'm not gonna fill up I'm just gonna give it a little coat in there. Because it'll fill up as epoxy is getting pushed over the masking tape. Okay. A little bit more on this back part here. More back here. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to twist and insert. Let the extra drip back in my cup. And there we go. Boom. Okay. I'm going to twist it to get it lined up. And I'm going to. I'm going to stand it up. And I'm just going to wipe off any extra epoxy there. Okay. Now one thing I can do, so I'm just going to take some tape and I'm going to tape the cap on just so it doesn't come off again. Okay. Got to do that earlier. Tape my cap off on. I'm going to line up the rod. And then once it, I've got it all lined up, I'm just going to set this against a wall somewhere where it can just set up vertically like this. The epoxy will, will kind of slowly ooze back. It'll fill up any gaps in the back, front. It's going to be a super solid connection. Okay, now i got my LA Colors Color Craze nail polish. It's the cheapest black nail polish I could find, frankly. And I'm going to go ahead and just color that up. There you go just to make it look nice purely cosmetic there we go all done ready to fish okay so this time I'm doing a spin cast rod for a child who only has a use of one arm so this didn't have a very long um, handle to start with I, I cut it off a little bit and then I took a, a grinder, uh, a grinding wheel, and I just cut off the, cut down the foam. And it has this aluminum winding check you can see here. I, I had to just grind that a little bit just to get it to fit there. I'm using a little narrower masking tape. You can see I can get two sections there. And we want to make it so that that child can release it. And I've got a much bigger hand, so I put it closer so that the heel of their hand will hit that release to take it off the ch their chest. And just clean it up a little bit more if I want. Make it look perfect. I think that's going to be pretty good. So this time I'm going to use the food scale to measure my epoxy. So an empty cup is two grams. I've put four grams of one part in there. 
So I'm going to add another 4 grams. And that will give me a nice even mix. Even amount of resin and hardener. Put it on my epoxy. Seal the end there. Point at the end so that the to hold the cap on. Pull this amount out here. And you can be really liberal with that. You just want to make sure you don't have too much that's going to interfere, interfere with the uh, you're going to get some on the release lever, which will push it on. Okay. Just pulling this gap. <clears throat> Cover my masking tape. If you notice, I'm not going all the way up here because as I push it, it's gonna it's gonna push plenty of epoxy up there. Okay, I'm just gonna let it turn it as I slide it on here. See, it's pushing that epoxy, filling it in those gaps there. And okay, nice. And I can back it out a little bit if I need to. Set that there. Let me go ahead and my stick here and just even out some of this epoxy here so it covers that, that masking tape there at the end there. Covers all that masking tape. So it'll be nice and waterproof. There you go. You could use a cheap paintbrush if you like. I'm just going to put some extra there. Cover all that. And then I'm going to clean it up with the paper towel with rubbing alcohol. Okay. Put some rubbing alcohol on there. Then I'll clean up any extra epoxy. Oops, let me push that, make sure that's down. Okay. Just make sure you're not getting it in the spring there. there you go. Nice. Cleans up really easy. Nice, there you go. I'm just going to twist it into the right spot. Make sure that's lined up correctly. And then <clears throat> set it vertical to uh, dry. And then we're pretty much done. All you got to do is do the little trick with the black nail polish and you're good to go.